Hi, we're back. Here's going to be a short video on uh, notice, uh, both constitutional and uh, rule-based. Okay, let's start off with the Constitution. Uh, for the Constitution, we read the Mullane case. Recall that the Constitution requires notice and opportunity uh, uh, to defend. Here's some other key language on page 329 of the case book. Notice must be to reasonably convey to the required information and therefore a reasonable time to make an appearance. Okay. The case also tells us notice that's a mere gesture is not due process. Even though notice won't always give actual knowledge, it needs to be reasonably calculated towards giving that actual knowledge. So let's talk for a minute about what notice means. Notice can occur without knowledge, and knowledge can occur without notice. But under the Constitution, lay, notice has to be more than a mere gesture. It has to be geared towards giving that actual knowledge. Okay? There was that hypo on the midterm. I remember one of the uh, fact patterns was about that, right? Mm -hmm. The rule was satisfied, but the Constitution was not. Well, here's another example. In notice, you've got to satisfy both the Constitution. That's Malay we just talked about, right? Giving notice calculated towards giving actual knowledge, even if actual knowledge doesn't ensue. It's got to be reasonable calculate, reasonably calculated towards that. Well, it's not enough to satisfy just uh, the Constitution. You also have to satisfy uh, a relevant rule. All right? And Rule 4, we talked about in detail. I'm not going to talk about it in detail here in this review section, session, but just by way of example, I'll talk about Section 4E that indicates um, how you satisfy the notice requirement under the FRCP for uh, service of the summons and the complaint. And there's a number of ways you can do it. One, these ones here are 42. These are the federal bases, all right? Delivering a copy of the summons the complaint to the person personally. Another one, leaving a copy at their dwelling or usual place of abode with someone of suitable age and discretion. Or delivering a copy to an agent authorized by appointment or by the law to receive service of process. Well, these are all the federal bases. But keep in mind that in federal court, we can also use state bases, specifically the state law for uh, serving a summons, either in the place where the district court is located, okay, that's the place of the suit, right, or where service is made, that's the place of the service. So say, for example, you have a lawsuit filed in California in federal court and service is made in Florida. Well, you can either use any of the federal bases, 4E, 2A, B, and C, or under 41, you could use either the, 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 the rules for service of the state where the lawsuit was filed, that was California, that would be California service rules, or the rules of the place where service is made. Here I said the service was made in Florida. You could use the Florida service rules regarding that particular person. Any of them could be used. So ultimately, if you have a fact pattern involving the service of the summons complaint, keep in mind a couple things. First, you've got to satisfy due process. That's the Constitution, right? That's Malay. And second, you've got to satisfy the rules of service. If you're in federal court, it's going to be FRCP 4 for the initial summons and complaint, which in turn allows you to look to state law and federal bases. That's 4E1 and 4E2. So you have a fact pattern involving service. Make sure that you go through all these steps of, of the analysis. Now beyond that, I'm not going to get into details for Rule 4 is big. We talked about it in class. Um, rule 5 and 6 I'm going to note only briefly. Uh, rule 5 is for service of papers done after the initial summons and complaint. For example, things like answers. Uh, motions, uh, discovery requests, discovery responses. Uh, those are handled under Rule 5, and they have a much longer list of bases for service. Rule 6 is for uh, timing of service. So, for example, if you have 21 days to answer a complaint, uh, but the last day falls on a Sunday or a holiday, then 
the, the uh, response would be due on the next day. It's not a Sunday or a holiday. Uh, beyond that, I'm not going to go into detail. Uh, the final thing I'm going to note about notice is that notice is a necessary condition for personal jurisdiction. It's necessary, but usually not by itself sufficient. Under Rule 4K, and I'll do this here in this part of the analysis very briefly, because we're going to get back to 4K in a minute. Under Rule 4K, serving your summons, well, that's required under Rule 4, right? And under the Constitution. You've got to serve the summons and the complaint. Well, serving the summons will establish jurisdiction as long as there's a basis for personal jurisdiction. So what I mean, what I say is service is necessary but not sufficient, I'm referring to this. Rule 4 says you get PJ if you serve the summons, but you also have to satisfy some other basis, such as satisfying the state long arm, plus 14th Amendment due process, or satisfying the bulge rule, or something like that. The one and only time that the service of the summons uh, both uh, satisfies the requirements of notice and additionally establishes personal jurisdiction is tag jurisdiction, tag jurisdiction which itself is, of course, um, um, a, a questionable status because of the Burnham case. I'm going to stop the video and then we're going to move into our PJ discussion.